Hi everyone, welcome to another community roundup. My my, it's been a while, it's quite overdue. If you're new here by the way, every now and again we do these roundup videos where I talk about interesting things happening in and around the Blender community, but even though people have come to expect this from this channel, I still let them down by taking so long in between these videos. It's the expectation that does it, you know? Anyway, there's been a lot going on, it's actually been quite hard to keep track of all of it, so much so that it's been difficult to make notes on everything. So in this video I'm going to show you some of the things I've been interested in and want to draw some attention to, and then I'm just going to let the fates take over and you and I are going to sit down, have a wander through the community and discover some interesting things live, well kind of live. Before we get into it I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by a friend of mine using our casual sponsor system Devanshu, an excellent 3D artist, wants to advertise their skills. So if there's anyone looking for an amazing generalist adaptable to all different kinds of 3D pipelines then I will talk a bit more about him later. Devanshu is a wonderful person and I'm very happy to share them with you. So the first thing I want to share with you is an amazing creator that many people know the blend community, Daniel Bystead, again I'm like terrible with like the real pronunciation of names, has created a cloth simulation add-on for Blender. Now Blender's been capable of cloth simulations for a while, in fact back in the day I did a pretty popular tutorial on cloth simulation, but like real-time interaction, like actually simulating the cloth in real-time, interacting with it to change the shape of it, has always been kind of, I don't want to say off the table, but a little bit tricky in Blender. That's why a lot of people move to Marvelous Designer to do the cloth simulation side of things and then bring the results back into Blender afterwards. However, to help with this, Daniel has made an add-on to try and simplify the process of modifying, pinning, kind of manipulating cloth in real time in Blender, um, which you can see here as well, because thankfully they've done a tutorial kind of guiding you through the process. Biostats Cloth Builder Blender add-on tutorial. With this add-on, you can run the simulation, stop the simulation, change the quality of it, add and remove different pinned elements of the cloth, just to try and make it less painful. So I figured this is something you might want to know about because cloth is extremely powerful, like cloth simulations, for not just organic and like character design with fashion and fabrics but also in the hard surface environment because maybe it's a bit of a cliche now but you might have seen so many like science fiction artworks like these soft paneling elements for like space station interiors and exteriors. In my mind I'm imagining Paul Pepera, an amazing artist that inspired me way back in the day who certainly passed away now but if you go back and take a look at his old art station page you'll see a lot of this stuff. So if you're interested in an easier way to manipulate a uh, cloth in Blender and again I should say this is free then make sure to check out the add-on and Daniel's introduction video so you can get up to speed with it. So Martinch, one of the members of the physical add-ons crew that make physical starlight and atmosphere and the physical celestial objects add-on, has been working on this incredible ocean system for Blender. It allows you to create oceans which go on for infinity and it has these like wave and wind dynamics. And I've done a video about these add-ons before, I really do love the kind of like physical groundedness about them and how they're taking something which is traditionally very difficult to do in, well not just Blender but like 3D engines in general, like real scale massive mediums should we say, like like being able to simulate planets, the way they do it in the physical celestial objects add-on is by actually rendering it inside of the world shader. So instead of being a physical planet object, you can get a real scale planet, but it's just rendered in the world shader, which means that the light it generates is also going to be reflected off of the objects in your scene, and you control the parameters of its position and its scale in the world nodes. So it's an interesting like rendering trick, should we say, to get like real scale things. For a little bit of a behind the scenes on how this ocean system will work, Martinch says behind the scenes, the detail ocean mesh is only a two kilometer square. Now that follows the camera and subdivides into smaller chunks, given the position of the camera in relation to it, I imagine. The rest of the ocean is extended with only a plane. For this video I reduced the frustrum culling offset to see it in action. Frustrum culling by the way is where like you know everything outside of the view frustrum of the camera is not rendered. Here we can see an example of the Kelvin wakes with foam, not simulated. Wake is a depth texture projected from position of the boat. Foam is a low resolution animated texture, no idea where I got it from. Ideally I'd like to simulate both at one point. So the foam is a texture but at some point they're going to want to try and find a way to simulate it. So yeah wonderful, interesting thing to keep an eye on. The physical add-ons crew have a discord server if you want to like you know check out a bit more information, get help with the products and I don't know just keep an eye on the previews. Lovely work Martinch and I need to ask because we have had a call before, am I pronouncing it right finally Martinch and the last name? Not that I, I didn't like I didn't ask how you say your last name but is it Upitis? Martinch Upitis or something like that? <laughs> Let the British guy be an embarrassment to his country. <laughs> Martin Schupitis. All right, next up, someone I've been admiring for a while. We've got Pavel Olivia, who I have uh, shared in a previous video because they did this wonderful Buildify system with geometry nodes. We can generate all different kinds of like building shapes. Uh, but recently they did something very impressive. Let's scroll down and find the original post. 
to Hugo, they were working on this kind of, how would I describe it, like this shanty, like plank bridge thing. And it's an amazing tool because effectively you're just using planes, draw out where you want the path to go and it will interpret that and then generate this really hyper detailed path system using the planks. And there's lots of detail in between there. You've got like all these kind of like hanging fabric bits underneath the path. And as you can see here, minus the terrible compression from Twitter slash X, it's an incredible tool when combined with like rock structures because again, it's all procedural. This is what the power of geometry nodes is that you don't have to model everything individually. So being able to make these tools is wonderful. But again, on Twitter, a bit like how Martin gave us a breakdown, Pavel has given us a little bit more information. They use the Higsas custom nodes in geometry nodes. So these are a bunch of like helper functions, which you can check out on Gumroad. Let me just quickly click on that. So checking this out here, a nine euro plus collection of helper nodes with lovely uh, examples here of what they do. Looks great. Some custom icons in there as well. Good distribution tools like this tessellate mesh one looks pretty cool. So that's all super helpful. But in this video on Twitter, Pavel is actually narrating and giving a bit of a demonstration showing the node system here and kind of breaking down how you do things sequentially and then layer by layer put this tool together. So I'm not going to play the whole thing here because I think that's not fair, but maybe I'll just play a little bit here just so you can get a kind of general idea for what it's like. Fix the rotation to the surface and extrude boundary edges to get this column that I use to sample a proximity of each plank and combine with the noise to make a mask for a plank deletion. So I can make this, yay! Yay. <laughs> Wonderful. I do want to like start playing around and making more of those tools on my own. Again, something I said in the past that I've kind of been waiting a bit because so much of the like geometry nodes and modifier and just node systems in general is changing in Blender, even just in the ways of like how we interact with the interface because we've got like new expandable panels coming. And again, speaking to some other creators, it feels like when some features are added, they're then removed afterwards and then like changed in certain ways. So because I want to actually develop tools for it, I tend to just wait for the the actual stable versions to arrive before jumping into it. And I would also like to keep you updated on the things which are coming to Blender in advance. But again, the thing is, a lot of the time, the things I want to talk about, changes are made to them so frequently that by the time I get a video out, it won't be necessarily accurate information. That's just the nature of how development in Blender works. It's like a superposition of possible end results, and we're only going to know what it is when the stable version arrives. Now, at this point in the video, I just want to give a congratulations and a celebration to one of my friends, one of my YouTube brothers, Ducky3D, for passing half a million subscribers, which is fantastic. Now, I'm sure most of you know who Ducky is, but if you don't, then it's definitely, definitely worth checking out his YouTube channel. He does a variety of content, largely focused around a lot of motion graphics type stuff. So there's lots of useful content there, but I think more importantly than any of the content itself, Ducky is just a lovely person to interact with. It's been, you know, a pleasure talking with him in the past as well. And the reason why I have a soft spot for Ducky and CG matter for that matter. It's because we all kind of started around the same time or rather kicked off around the same time with the 2.8 code quest in Blender. Like that was when everything kind of just like started to take off. So I have a special place in my heart for these guys. So yeah, nice one, Ducky. Anyway, the most recent video, why Blender 4.0 is amazing for motion graphics, seems to have picked up a lovely audience as well. Very well done. Let's take a quick look over here, which I haven't watched it yet. Sorry, Ducky, but I will do. But let's see, they're going to be talking about the Voronoi node updates. Okay, fractal noise. Wonderful. Back Backwards compatibility, quality of life updates, subsurface materials, AGX color space. Oh my God, that is something I am looking forward to as well because mm, with the emissive lighting that I love to do in my work, AGX is going to look so much better than Filmic. If you haven't seen any comparisons, then maybe I'll try and find something for the screen now because all the color space coming in 4.0 is going to be wonderful. UV for lights and light linking and updates to the viewport compositing. Yeah, that is great as well. So thank you, Ducky. Another channel that I think might be worth checking out if you're interested in Blender YouTube content is Yakovlev Art. Sorry if I I pronounced it wrong again. I, I, okay, let's do a compilation. Every time Curtis apologizes for potentially pronouncing someone's name wrong. But Yakovlev is someone I've been following on Instagram for a while. We've had some conversations and it seems like, you know, they're pretty committed to the idea of producing some educational content for people. I think it deserves more attention. Recently, how I made this creepy animation in Blender, the best way to come up with art ideas, how to easily paint rain on any image and just like other general art breakdowns. And it's mostly focused around Blender content. So if you want more stuff to saturate your feed, check it out. And also they do have quite a large Instagram following as well. Here we go, 69.8 thousand followers, where they have a collection of nice artistic reels. Also a TikTok and Patreon as well. I'm not going to tell you that I featured you, Kovlev. You'll just have to find out for thyself. Hopefully it'll be a nice surprise. Now, someone who I did recommend once in a previous video, I think, Smouse has a wonderful collection of shaders in their Shaders Plus package on Gumroad. It's a lot of stuff related 
relating to caustics and the thin film interference. Um, but their Twitter feed is always a wonderful source of inspiration because they're constantly sharing like really cool demonstrations and examples of how the shaders work. But in particular, the demos which interest me are the Blade Runner inspired ones because if you know me, I'm a massive fan of Blade Runner. Blade Runner, Dune, Prometheus, you know, all these kind of like sci-fi things with very clean, well-constructed aesthetic styles. You know what I mean? Good cinematography. So Smouse really is like the king of caustics in Blender at the moment. If you want to achieve these kinds of caustics for yourself in Blender, then I recommend checking out their Shaders Plus products. I believe I have an affiliate link as well, so I will put that in the description. I think, to be honest, I really do need to spend some time sitting down with it because for my kinds of like liminally interior design type artworks, then and this is going to be like really fun to play with. I can imagine using it for different kinds of like pools, you know, different interior architectural scenes where you can like look underneath pools and look into like aquariums and stuff like that. Yeah, that'd be really fun. So before we talk about Devanshu, just a couple more things. First of all, I did a video on the Conjure SDF add-on, which is coming to Blender, which is effectively an add-on which allows you to model using SDFs. I've always wanted to assign distance fields or functions. I did a whole video explaining the principle behind this, a new way to model in Blender. That blew up. So thank you to everyone who watch that. In fact, some of you watching now might have just come along from that video, so I'm glad that people found it useful. For those of you that don't know, it's just like one other way of mathematically describing shapes. It will kind of subvert the polygonal limitations, should we say, of doing like Boolean type modeling. This will be especially important for hard surface modelers who don't want to have their concepting phase inhibited by some of the more technical frustrating limitations of adding and subtracting shapes together. But I did say earlier in the video we were going to let the fates decide what other projects I was going to share in this video. So today, for the first time on one of these community roundups, we're checking out the Blender subreddit live. Now the Blender subreddit is a really cool place to find inspiration. It's quite an active part of the community. Lots of people sharing the different artworks and different tutorials, products, projects, etc. Although it's a good thing I'm doing it now and not a few weeks ago when the Blender community had a bit of an NSFW phase. It's a little bit of an inside joke for you. But anyway, that's the first thing we're seeing here. User, watch your eggs, has made a cool shooting animation. Lovely, pretty good. Seems like a video game type gun. Love that, very nice. Someone's made an interstellar style black hole with the help of tutorials. D-Strike Zero, lovely, love that result. Incidentally, Interstellar is a wonderful film. I recommend checking it out. Oh, very cool. User Shaggy X Lil Raff Free. Sounds a bit like a rap name. Has managed to make a Stuart platform. This is like a motion based type thing with adaptable joints. Very cool. Cool for robotic design as well, I suppose. But it goes to show that the joint system in Blender, or the constraint system, has a lot of potential to it. User Milter says, started to learn Blender 3D sculpting and I ended up doing this thing. To be honest, I'm not too surprised. <laughs> A lot of people's first skulls tend to look a little bit strange, strange faces, should we say. Okay, user Semi Free has made a charging car, and they say, what do we think? But what I think is, that's pretty cute. I love that. Is it going to fill the car up? Yes, it does. Very nice. Lovely. I love these consistent style types of works. And finally, <laughs> user SW33T Rum has made a self-portrait. Beautiful. That is a wonderful self-portrait. I think it very accurately captures your features. <laughs> but what was that flash there? Let me capture this. Something over the face. Interesting. Did you accidentally like keyframe the visibility of an object to the timeline? Is that what happened there? Hmm, interesting. All right, so that's the project. Let me talk about our community sponsor, Devanshu. So to talk about Devanshu, I'm going to come to his 80 level page. If you don't know, 80 level is a pretty good website for like finding news related to the CG world, but also they have this talent section where you can learn more about people that are looking for work. Now, Devanshu is a very talented 3D generalist. They've worked on all kinds of different uh, shows and miscellaneous projects. I'm going to show you here that for the Netflix documentary series, Indian Predator, they did modeling, layout, lighting, shading, and animation. I might leave some links to their work here actually in the pinned comment of this YouTube video but it's very like high class work. For their personal work they typically use Unreal, Houdini and Blender and when they work in teams they're usually called on to kind of like fix different pipeline problems, see what's possible, R&D procedural work etc. Here we can see their contribution is modeling, layout, lighting, shading, simulation and animation on multiple scenes. So if you're looking for a generalist who does have a nice body of experience, in particular if you're working on any kind of like show for example, then I recommend taking a look at Devanshu's portfolio and seeing if you think their skills might be applicable to you. This title sequence in particular is something that's a bit more up my alley in terms of style. So like I said, Devanshu is a friend of mine. Uh, we chat every now and again, and not only do I recommend them because they're using our casual sponsor system, but also because they are just a nice person overall. In fact, the reason they use the casual sponsor system wasn't just to get the name out there, it was also to support me. So I think it would be difficult to find a better reason to recommend someone. So if you or if anyone you know is looking for a 3D generalist, then please keep in mind Devanshu Tuck.
So if you made it this far through the video, can you please put a, what emoji should we do this time? A time emoji, a time related emoji in the comments. If you do that, I'll be able to see who did make it this far through the video. The reason we're going to do a time one is because I want you to humiliate me. <laughs> Have a go at me for taking so long to do another one of these videos. It'll give me a reason not to spend so long in between. All right, hopefully you found this useful. Relevant links will be in the description. Have a fantastic day, everyone, and I will see you next time.